Welcome. I hope you enjoy the conversation you're about to see between me and another comedian about religion and comedy. These are conversations I'm calling Disorganized Religion. God bless. And for those atheists out there, may nothing await you after this life. Hey, Hi. nerds. Welcome to another episode of Disorganized Religion. This week, well, I am your host, as always, Seth Lawrence, but that didn't even, that didn't even need to be said. This week, you want to know who our guest is, and it is the fantastic, the one, the only. He's been on NBC's Bring the Funny. He's been on Conan, Michael Longfellow. Everybody, Michael Longfellow, make it loud. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you for making this work. I'm glad it took uh, social distancing to bring us together. Yeah, it took a pandemic because we've tried to do this a few times. I know. And uh, life got in the way. But now that life is no more, here we are. Nothing to get in the way. (laughs) I'm so happy to do anything. Yeah, well, I'm glad this is uh, on the list. So how you been? How you been holding up during the pandemic? I don't know how to answer that anymore. I feel like it's been too long. It was easy the first yeah. like month or two. And I had like the, oh, I adjusted and, you right. know, actually having a, a great time. In the beginning, I do think I realized that I really haven't taken a break since I started doing stand-up. Yeah. Like even a vacation. It feels like I take vacations because I travel all the time. Yeah. But there's always, I'm always there to do stand up. So yeah. when I, I've been living my life in these moments, just I've been existing between moments of judgment, just comedy shows, just these moments of judgment. <laughs> and then my life exists in between those. And it's really nice to not have those moments of judgment. It was really nice for like a month. And now I'm a little antsy again, yeah. um, ready to get back to it. And also just, uh, <sighs> curious about how it will function in a, a new world not only with yeah. the pandemic but all of the, the social change and everything yeah uh um, yeah man i mean it's been it's been now how long three months that everyone's been three so, four months three, close yeah. to four months maybe who even, who even knows anymore so what was your schedule like before i mean were you out every weekend different town yeah yeah for the first time i was finally uh yeah i was out i was i had a few headlining weekends coming up in a row jeez i was doing yeah i was doing clubs every week it was perfect it was great it felt like for the first time my schedule was full i was able to support myself yeah um i had a a a great headlining date for these kind of important people uh see i had some momentum i had a great snowball of momentum set Man, and then what the hell started to curse? <laughs> and then God had his own what, plan. What happened? Yeah, he did. <laughs> Dude, he uh, took it all away. He took it all away quick. Jeez. Well, easy come, easy go, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, super, super easy come. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been doing stand up, Michael? Almost a decade. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so when I was 18, I'm 26, so eight years, closer to nine. Yeah. That's crazy. So did you do college? I did do college. Yeah. I did college. Okay. Yeah, you did. (laughs) Like Daisy did Dallas or whatever it was. Yeah. But even before I went into college, I was already like, I'm going to be a famous stand-up comedian. So Is that right? Yeah. What major can I choose that will not really get in the way and be pretty easy? I did my last two years online pretty much. Mm -hmm. So I did college, I guess. What did you study? what was I the major? Literature. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. Didn't read any of the books. <laughs> of course not. Why would you when there are films of most of the classics? Yeah. I would for some reason justify like me not doing the assignments with like, well, but I'm working, you know, I did two sets tonight and they went well. That's boring. yeah. And these kids are doing, oh my God, my phone's slipping. Hang on. Oh, I'm that's on okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's so sad. I love it. Now, are you living alone now? I live with my girlfriend. With your, okay. So does that make quarantine easier, do you feel like? Or have you gotten to the point so. now where it's like, uh, we, someone's got to go somewhere? Um, luckily, she did go somewhere. <laughs> I'm lucky. I don't want to, I take that back totally. <laughs> She's so easy to be around, dude. Yeah, um, that's good. Yeah, she makes it better for sure. She went up to her parents' place, though. Yeah. Uh, 
so we have been she's coming back down sunday i'm excited to see her nice yeah we're uh we're upsettingly good together yeah you make There's everyone else lack nauseated of, yeah i almost want to fight yeah I just want to something yeah i feel like you had an instagram post where you two were fighting for fake oh i asked her that a was terrible, a long time question. ago and she, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I would never post a real fight. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's murder. That's murder right there. Yeah, but we like, we never, we really don't fight that much. Yeah. What's the secret, do you think? Is it just, what's her been your secret, Michael? put up with a lot of bullshit, pretty much. <laughs> right? It's just all she her. Just has a high tolerance for nonsense. And yeah, she's just super cool. That's the secret, that she is super yeah. cool. Nice. So stand up for eight years, always the dream to do stand up. Who, who drew you to stand up or what drew you to stand up? I have no idea what drew me to stand up. Oh yeah. I try to think of that all the time. I try to make up cool like stories for myself of like, yeah. Oh, I remember when I was a boy and I sat around the TV. Like superhero. Stay up late. (laughs) I watched Benny Bennigan do stand up on whatever but yeah my dad my dad and i never did that we mostly watched movies i didn't see stand up i think i would come home from school and watch comedy central Mm -hmm. uh and there was always like premium blend on or something sure maybe that's not the show comedy central presents whatever i would see stand up and i always thought that i would just dude i thought i was so dumb growing up i thought i would be lucky to just dig ditches and maybe have sex with a girl every once in a while i was like that would be a great life for me because yeah. i was terrible in school math homework made me cry okay cry really 17 years old crying just tears yeah because i just couldn't do it i couldn't get it so i thought yeah. i was dumb yeah and then uh but i was always funny that was always my kind of way of coping with everything or the excuse of me sucking at sports was <laughs> i would fall or get hit by a ground ball and then uh-huh. i would say something funny to like take the attention away Sure. And I never put the pieces together until later that like you could actually, I just thought you had to be absolutely Albert Einstein to do anything of significance or special, especially. Oh. Stand up. Yeah. Was and that, then I tried it. Was that like a, uh, an upbringing thing? I mean, are your parents really smart? My parents are very smart. They're both, oh. uh, they're both attorneys, man. Your dad's a but divorce attorney, right? My dad's a divorce attorney. You and your mom's, your mom's what kind of attorney? She's real, uh, real estate, business real estate. Okay. Yeah. Um, she pretty much just edits. Yeah. Contracts and documents. Right? Dude. Yeah. yeah. She's always just, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I never really Man. thought about that. I don't know. I just thought I was, uh, just, just thought I didn't have it. Yeah. Didn't know, didn't know what I wanted to do. Poor, poor little diamond in the rough. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So, when was your first open mic experience, or when was your first experience on stage as a stand-up? My mom signed me up for a comedy class. No kidding. I I just mentioned it to her that I wanted to do it. Yeah. Not the class, but stand-up. Yeah. And I think she was so desperate for me to like show interest in anything at all and have some sort of path. (laughs) She was like, right. And she, against my wishes, signed me up for this class because I was like, that's not real. You know, you can't teach oh, comedy. It was all like sure. high and mighty. Yeah, well, Never were, done it. Already yeah. Had all these. Yeah. No, this is how it is. <laughs> that's trash. And it was nice, too, for like, I would, my freshman year in college, mm-hmm. uh, every Tuesday, I would ride my bike down to this Center for the Arts, Tempe Center for the Arts, and I would write. It was me and old people, me and a bunch of old people that wanted to do it once before they yeah. died. Yeah. Have a bucket list for him. Yeah. And I wanted to, you know, really do it. And I kind of uh, spent a couple of years there of like, my first show was at the end of the class, at the end of four weeks, you do yeah. five minutes. Yeah. Um, I remember it was one guy's family in the audience, uh-huh. but there were like 50 of them. It was like the biggest family I'd ever seen. Jeez. And they were the nicest people, dude. I crushed so hard. I yeah. think it was my best set was my first set <laughs> i destroyed chasing the family reunion high ever since yeah, dude. i crushed so hard everyone yeah. loved me i was obviously hooked 
I was hooked. I would have been hooked if I bombed. I knew I had already like told people I was going to, that this was it, that I was going to be, <laughs> be good at this, <laughs> which sucked, dude. That's, I so wish I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> but I mean, look at you like, now, right? I like, know it worked. Yeah, it, it worked, worked out. out. Maybe it made me work harder because I was like, I can't, I can't be embarrassed. But, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was secretive with it though. I didn't like tell anyone where I was doing it or really what I was. Yeah. I just. Yeah. So, I so were you also shy in school or? Is I that... would teeter. I would go yeah. back and forth. I would be manic and then I would be shy. Like my freshman, sophomore year, I was really, I would get kicked out of class for talking too much. Nothing crazy. Nothing like, yeah. I didn't have the balls to be like cool. And great. I would just talk too much. Like nervous, <laughs> nervous talking. No, just talking to my friends or something. Oh, okay. Just like not paying attention. Yeah. Um, and then after my junior and senior year, I like, dude, I was the shyest person in the world. I hmm. never talked. Something happened. I don't know if I got off some medication. I can't remember when I stopped taking all the crappy ADD medication. Through middle school, I was just a yeah. pill bucket. Like I was Jeez. prescribed everything. And then I, yeah, like, I hate the way this makes me feel. I don't want to do it. So maybe right. that was it. But it made me very, very quiet and shy. Mm. People would tell me that they're like, this person's waiting for you to ask them to the dance. And I would still not. You'd be like, okay. Like yeah. Still like, all right. Well, first of all, I would never go to the dance because that sounds like a panic attack. That sounds uh -huh. like the, I'm going to be in a suit around people. Right, <laughs> right. And, friends. What are you and, then, crazy? and then have to dance. I mean, actually dance. Yeah, Who's going to play World of Warcraft for me for the whole day? That <laughs> was all I did. Got to mind the I gold. World of Warcraft. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Pun intended. Uh, I, mean, I think I realized, I think that's what got me into stand. I was playing video games so much. I was like, I have to do something or I'm going to waste my entire life on this. Mm, right. Which I could have done in semi enjoyed my life like i loved them that much but i knew i wanted to do yeah yeah something. yeah right so so was there a lot of people i talked to it's the connection that they feel on stage with complete strangers and regardless of approval or disapproval there's still some sort of shared experience that's happening so was yeah. that a big piece of it for you too dude it sounds so corny but it's literally the most comfortable place that i am the entire day is yeah. on stage what I makes it so comfortable for you? I think the control. I think that I can get across everything I'm trying to exactly the way that I want to. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't always that way. I, of course, went through a couple of years of like shaking and nerves. And I still get nervous before the show. But when I'm on, now I know that I have put in enough work to at least be capable. Yeah. And yeah, dude, it's literally, I don't know. It's the most comfortable place for me, yeah. for sure. And was then I'll it? get off stage and I'll have a weird handshake with someone and I'll think about it for a week. <laughs> yeah. And you'll be like, no, I don't like this. I'll this be like, I bet, they, I bet they think I'm weird. I bet they hate me. <laughs> <laughs> were you, were you still comfortable on the, uh, bring the funny stage or what was that experience like for you? That was definitely nerve wracking. Um, it was also physically very cold, but that's besides the point. On the stage? It was just, yeah, the set was so cold. I huh. remember I have like no, I have no meat on my bones. As yeah. My mom says, right? You're 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 a rail. So I get very cold. My mom says that, and I'm like, it's your fault. You don't want to weighs like ninety pounds. This tiny lady. Just bad genetics. <laughs> <laughs> don't yeah, body I shame remember every mother. week. Every week I would advance on Ring the Funny. I'd be like, oh, there'd be half joy for advancing, and then half of me would be like, oh no, but I have to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> That's. <laughs> It ruins, it ruins the whole week when you have to do a set on like the, on a competition show. My late yeah. night, I was excited. I was yeah. nervous, but I was excited. And yeah. I knew that I had it down. The show, the jokes were kind of newer, oddly mm. enough. Um, I didn't have a lot of sets during the show. So I wasn't like really, it's not like I did three nights of shows and then my set, I kind of was like, you're on set doing yeah. other stuff and and you don't have you don't have time to go do shows so you kind of go into it cold a little bit hmm. right and then there's dude there's like judges 
Yeah. So if you're doing comedy on television, you're already being judged yeah. by America. Yeah. That's enough judgment for me. And yeah. then you add more judgment and then they talk to you afterwards. I didn't hear a word they said. I was just thinking, what does my face look like? <laughs> Do I, am I reacting appropriately? Yeah, 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 yeah. Did I come off too cocky, too yeah. strong, too humble? What's the, yeah. I got lucky because they were really, really nice to me and they made me look really good. I mean, nice. it's, you're a likable person though. And so no TV show wants to make a likable person a villain. Nobody wants to do that. I know I'm a likable person, but there's a, dude, when I get nervous, I don't know. For I don't sure. know if I'm likable or not. I feel like I'm just a, a shell. Yeah, yeah. Us. Well, I'm, so what was it like? meeting because you've met now two sort of big as far as i know pinnacles in the comedy world you know conan and and now jeff foxworthy so i mean did either have big influences on you as you were coming up or what was the experience oh, exactly. like yeah when i was a kid my dad my dad loves jeff foxworthy i think it's his favorite comedian yeah which was big for me to get i was like i need that guy's respect because if he shows if he says that like you're good and my dad sees that we're good for life. Yeah. Like, I'm, right. I have his support in this endeavor forever. Yeah. And you kind of got that, right? I did. Yeah, I did directly. Yeah. It was, Jeff was so freaking, he was specifically nice to stand ups, obviously on the sure. show. Yeah. But, yeah. He was really, really nice to me. Um, and then Conan was in college. And when I started comedy, he was all I watched. I loved him so much. I loved how happy, he was and goofy he was yeah i didn't he never i don't know i guess there's not all comedy's good but he never tried to like look cool mm. or some he always would make himself the fool which i always liked and kind of took as a rule yeah like, i don't want to be a i feel like the way you look cool in comedy is by being the fool uh, yeah. yeah i don't know what i mean by that being but, you know, the like, joke like, you, you know a guy that kind of, like, it's clearly they're in this to get laid or something. <laughs> like, kind of a very, yeah. they're very cool up there. and Right, right. The alpha yeah. comedians that... A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. there's anything wrong. And, and, you know, that's not, I'm not saying anyone's, I, don't, I can't even name a name, but... Right. Just a, I know it when I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, most of my experience has been around the open mic world. And I feel like a lot of them... Uh, there's still a lot of that energy. I mean, obviously we're all still kind of figuring out how to be our persona on stage and, and then dealing with hecklers or those not paying attention. Everybody goes yeah. into very different defensive or aggressive modes. So that part's very interesting to, to witness, but there's an yeah, energy about each comedian. Of too. You what? Sorry. I've probably, had, I've probably been guilty of it too. I've had probably had pockets of it. Yeah. Where you lose yourself for a week or something. Sure. But luckily, I've been able to come back. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. It's the that's... open mic scene. The open mics, they drive me crazy. When I get on the road and I'm actually doing real shows, I like feel normal in myself. But for some mm -hmm. reason, I get more nervous for some of the LA open mics than I do, than I was for Conan. Yeah. Really interesting. I, I think just because it's 40 of your peers there. Yeah. Peers, yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. They're my peers. Are gonna They're quit your underlings. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but for some reason you want these, you want their respect, you know, you want yeah. them to, to say, Hey, he's funny. He's great. Yeah. Well, would you rather perform in front of family or in front of LA open micers? Probably family. Uh, -huh. uh Because I've done it so much. I wouldn't always have that answer, but I've done comedy so much in front of my family. I'm numb. I'm numb to them being there. Yeah, gotcha. My mom's yeah. been to maybe every show I've ever done in Arizona. Uh huh. To the point where I would want her to stop coming because she would like tell me if it, I she she wasn't proud anymore and oh, she'd be no. like, "You weren't very good tonight." <laughs> like, not on. that, not like that. She's <laughs> way nicer than that. But she got good enough to know when I yeah. was having like a slower set. And she'd be like, "Oh, what? Well, what? Were you tired?" Yeah. What happened? Not what sleeping. Happened? That joke didn't sleep, land as well. Sure. Yeah, man. Right late. Moms. I just, want, I just want you to be amazed every time I do this. <laughs> yeah, please, please. Well, see, that's, I'm to that point with my, my wife is, she's like too nervous for me when I'm on stage. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So she's, anytime after a set that she's seen, she's always like, I, I don't even know how you did because I am, 
I was just so nervous for you. And uh, <laughs> I don't find that particularly comforting either. So yeah, I can understand. My girlfriend has to deal with, it takes a damn near perfect set for me to get off completely fine. Oh, sure. Like I'll, de- I've definitely had sets where Kate's been like, that was so great. And I've been like, let's leave right now. That was, I can't be around these people. And I ruined yeah. the whole night, you know, I'm bummed the rest of the night. She has to, right. so I try not to do that anymore because it ruins her night too. Yeah. But were you to the point where you can explain to her like, well, I missed I this tag. I, I just, myself. yeah, that's, she's always going to be, she's going to think. You I'm, were great. I was not great. She, she'll, but she'll, she'll know that even if I, she believes in me. She's like, even sure. if you do bad, I still think you're great. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, uh, I needed to get to a point where I could explain to myself, I can now, you know, I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't know if I can, bomb's the wrong word because bomb is too, I feel like once you do comedy enough, I don't know how you would fully, fully bomb. Yeah. And watch me bomb the first set back after this because I haven't done it in a while. But <laughs> well, I think everyone did. Everyone's going to be so excited to get out again that no oh, one's yeah. going to bomb. You know, everyone's going to understand like this is a new experience kind of for everybody this post yeah, post quarantine time. I can't wait. Yeah, but I do agree with you bombing seems to be a relative term, right? And I yeah. I felt kind of similar in that I will go up, I'll have an okay set uh but there's something that i wanted to work on there was a joke that i wanted to do and i either mess it up or forget to do it completely and then i feel like why bombed that was not at all i wasted my time yeah i think a bomb to me now is just not the best set that it could have been and i know yeah i don't know how sometimes i know how i know it sometimes i don't know how i know it but i know it yeah and it used to freak me out and now i can be like chill dude (laughs) There'll be another You're one. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fine. Yeah. You're not going to quit. You put all your marbles in this basket. That yeah. kind of eliminates, you know, what's going to happen. Right. You can't right. stop. You have nothing. You have nothing else. <laughs> what are you going to quit if you bomb? I mean, come no on. Way. Yeah. No, you're going to press forward whether the world wants it or not. You're here. Yeah. Whether I want it or not, really, because it's, it's the one skill I've developed. <laughs> Oh, but you're so good at it, Michael. You're so good at it. It's so fun to watch you up there. Thanks, Seth. Uh, so grew up in Arizona. Were you born in Arizona? Born and raised. Man, beautiful. What part of Arizona? Uh, Phoenix area. Born in the Phoenix Children's Hospital. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure I say that with very little. Oh, much. interesting. All right. Well, no I think I'm pretty sure it's hospital in Phoenix. Yeah. Um, lived in Gilbert originally and then moved to scottsdale in the fourth grade mm. i think fourth to third grade mm-hmm. so yeah that's been yeah so if you spent and and i know from seeing your comedy and talking to you before your parents split at what age did your parents get divorced they got divorced right after my sister was born she's 14 months younger than me so i guess like 14. oh wow maybe I can't remember if they, they might've split while my mom was pregnant with her. Gotcha. But either way, I was, I didn't have a brain yet. Yeah. yeah. So you don't have memories of mom and dad together. Yeah. In fact, this last Christmas, my mom was dropping me off at my dad's house uh, to like, we, you know, I have, she has us in the morning and then my dad has us in the evening on Christmas Mm. and, and she came in and we took a picture together and I realized while we were taking it, I was like, this is the first, only time this has ever happened that me, my sister, my dad, and my mom have all been in a picture together. Wow. That is crazy. Cool. It was pretty nice. Yeah. That's amazing. So, so your parents lived, have, have lived close enough to each other they their did entire really life. Well, yeah. They were great divorced parents. They lived 15, 20 minutes away. They didn't talk badly about each other. Yeah. Um, it literally just seemed like, like in my bit, the joke is that I didn't know if they really knew each other and it's a joke, but it really is kind of like how it was. Yeah. Yeah. It's like dad and mom. I had no idea what their relationship was. Right. Uh, You just knew you spent some time with the woman and some time with the man. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how much time or what was the division like? 
the division. What do you mean? Well, I mean, you would spend, you grew up mostly with your mom or you grew oh, up yeah. equally mom and dad or split up down the middle. Gotcha. So by month like, or by week, by, I think by week. Wow. So yeah. you just had two sets of clothes, two toothbrushes. Yep. Yeah. That's crazy. All that. I yeah. Was with, uh, my dad was more strict. So I, I was always, I think, I like moms a little more just because I had video games there and my dad. Ah, had video games. Interesting. Um, yeah. Often it's the other way around, you know, it's the dad. It is like, Hey, yeah, I'm no, party dad. I'm cool. Dad. More. With my dad, no means no. And with my mom, no means we're five minutes away from yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me one more time. <laughs> Same, yeah. 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 I can talk her into it. That's great. That's, that is the way it was for me growing up, except for my parents lived in the same house. So you'd, I would go to a different room if I wanted a different answer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, interesting. So, so were either of your parents religious or were you uh, raised? Yes. Yeah. My mom was very religious. Not very, well, I guess I would say very. When she grew up, she was very, very religious. Her mother, my grandmother worked in the church and, uh, that was a huge part. I went to Catholic mm. uh, church every Sunday. I went to the, the Sunday school, did the whole, all the stuff, communion. I have a little scary, like <laughs> my grandmother, when we got our communion, she gave you mean us all reassuring? the biblical names. Uh -huh. Like Michael, John, Joe. Yeah. Uh, so she would get a ceramic, whatever our angel was. Yeah. And I guess mine's the one that killed the devil. So oh. I have this, or I, I, I don't, I, I didn't but, know the devil was even killed. Is that, there's a lot of, lot of stuff in there. A lot of stuff <laughs> happened. So you're, uh, yeah. So who's the angel? But I had this you... terrifying statue of this man stabbing this like yellow, this red beast. Yeah. Uh, like as soon as I turned 12, I got it. Man, it sounds like your angels. Jesus is what it sounds like. Well, he's the, he's the, the head honch. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I've yeah. Lost touch since. But. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so do you remember the like, name you of of your your angel? Saint Michael. I oh, okay. Michael. Yeah. Got it. I wasn't sure if Michael was your given name or your christened name. No, Michael is the uh, given name. I don't know if I have a christened name. I don't know if I know what that means. Oh, I, I am a little bit fuzzy on my Catholic religious vernacular uh, and practices, rituals. For, for some reason, I thought that when you picked sort of your guardian angel or your patron saint, you also got a, a christened name coinciding oh, well with the patron saint. But maybe not. There was a, that's probably true. But I guess mine worked out just because I... My it was all Michael. Was yeah, it was my planned from the beginning. Michael. Just like your stand-up career. It was all known before. It was all, all part of the plan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what, what – uh, okay, so your mom, Catholic. Your dad, also Catholic, just less so? Or I guess so. I really don't remember ever going to church with dad. Yeah. Maybe Christmas we would. I think his second wife would make us go to church sometimes. Uh-huh. But he never really – he was just, uh, just never really cared. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. No, fair enough. Uh, yeah. Not against it or for it or really just, just didn't think about it. Yeah. So, but you going to Sunday school and doing, you know, the catechisms and stuff in, in Catholicism, did you ever connect with the religion or was it always like, this is just what we do with mom? I don't know if I ever knew that I connected with it, but I think analyzing it years later, I definitely felt uh, I definitely believed that Jesus was watching me. Mm -hmm. I remember <laughs> this is, can we, how dirty can I be on this podcast? I don't want to. You be yourself, Michael. You be yourself. I would be literally remember. To. Yeah. Let's just say if I was do, about to do something scandalous. Yeah. That it might maybe a young boy would do if he saw like a picture of a pretty lady. Sure. I love that you called it a lady. Yeah. If I was about to do that and I thought of Jesus, yeah, I couldn't do it because hmm. I was like, "That's the test. He's testing me. He knows I want to, Man. and if I don't, it'll be good." But yeah. that just turned into this like, I don't know if it's good to think that there's a dude watching you all the time. <laughs> yeah, 
I, I can see how that might know. be problematic. Yeah, I think it really kind of got into my head and maybe led to some of the shyness or whatever, <laughs> just the lack of doing what I want to do. Yeah. Eventually, I decided that if God loves me, he's going to love me no matter what. And I'm yeah. generally a good dude, so I think I'll be okay. Right, right. Growing up, probably till I was like 15, um, yeah, I was like uh, nervous of that guy not liking me. <laughs> that he would just be so disappointed. Did you? What did you think would happen if... I don't know. If something if bad Jesus to my family like, or no. I would have a life of peril and I would be... Uh, just destitute something. I don't yeah. know. You just felt like a you would girl. know God's judgment I, yeah. was upon you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So, so when do you still identify as Catholic or, or no? Or no? I guess not. I mean, I guess I don't, <laughs> I don't identify as another religion. <laughs> yeah. I'm not I, mean, like I gotta say now, but the, <laughs> the grand majority of Catholics I've talked to that answer, I guess not, is probably the most Catholic thing I've ever heard. Yeah, dude, you just forget about it. As soon as your mom's like, you don't have to go to church anymore, you're like, I'm all right. I'm <laughs> Great. That. Still, so was that, that, a, that, that I learned in me. Was that a I'm conversation sure. you and your mom had? Was like, hey, I'm not feeling it. Or, or she was just like, you know, if you don't want to, you're old enough now. It was one Christmas. I remember she was lying on the ground being a goofball or whatever mm -hmm. and then she was tired and we were supposed to go to the, the midnight mass right and she was just like kids we're not going to go to church it's fine <laughs> and and then she just kind of stopped making us it. go on sundays and yeah wow. it just faded away it wasn't really a big thing yeah there was no sit down there was no yeah. like you can choose what you want to do she definitely uh, is still religious. She prays for me all the time. She tells me that. Yeah. Um, she wants wants me to pray. I'll still catch myself maybe twice a year if something crazy happens. Yeah. I'll I'll catch myself doing a little light like, cross up every once in a while. Interesting. Just, okay. Like, every because that was just such a ingrained. It's like a thank you kind of. Yeah. Maybe yeah, I yeah. I step in traffic and I don't get hit by a car and I'm like, oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. thank you. Just in case, yeah. I don't right. know. Right. Right. So, do you still believe in God, or, or, or where do you stand, kind of spiritually now? God, what a funny thing that that's God, uh, dude. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely not an atheist. Uh huh. I. I would like, I believe in a higher power. Mm -hmm. Me, I don't know if that's, if I actually believe it or it's because I would like to. And it seems scary not to think that there's any sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but even if the higher power is aliens that sent us down here and we're a little video game, I'm, maybe that's it. It's just, there's a higher <laughs> something. Yeah. That is, yeah. I, uh, I do believe that like, you get out what you you get what you put out uh-huh as far as into this so that's i mean that's spiritual in a way yeah i believe in karma i guess yeah i, I would in guess some way. The, sort of the common uh understanding of karma this what goes around yeah comes like around. the light nothing crazy i don't think if i litter i'm gonna freaking die or something but <laughs> right right or, like, or the reincarnation yeah. Yeah. If I'm generally a good dude overall, it'll probably be a better life for me. Yeah. Good energy brings good Which energy. Is the only reason I'm a good dude. <laughs> so I get a good life. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I've been working on a on a bit about that. That I'm only a good person because of God. I don't understand why atheists are good people because I meet them all the time. But sort of like you're wasting your great. time. <laughs> Oh man. So, so what do you think is, uh, is, is there an afterlife for you? Do you, do God, you believe I hope there in is. an afterlife? Do you think about it or is it? Yes. I believe in the soul. Uh-huh. Something I eternal. Think it leads, yeah. And it, yeah. Bops around. I don't know where it goes, but it travels somewhere. And, mm -hmm. uh, that's what I hope. Yeah. Do you, do you I think, hope that, oh yeah, go ahead. I just hope that whatever we are 
lasts forever in yeah. whatever formation that means. Yeah. Yeah, I can appreciate that. Do you again, think- I don't know if this is what I want to believe or if it's just uh, if, if I actually believe it. Like if I had a gun to my head, I don't know. <laughs> you tell me the truth about what you believe right now. Uh, yeah. I mean, in the end, does it really matter if, I guess, as far as like, here's what I mean. So if you truly believe it, you're going to act a certain way. If you hope that it's true and you act the same way, in the end, does it really matter if your actions are still being dictated by a hope or a belief? Sounds kind of like it's the same thing to me. Yeah. Uh, I think it only matters in the way that, like, I just don't want the ride to end. Yeah. You're right. It doesn't matter, actually, to the world, no. Yeah, Not at all. But maybe just to you, right. I definitely think people need more of a, a reason than the fear of God to be good people. I think <laughs> you don't think that's are, enough you don't think i don't Jesus think it's watch you yeah, is like enough if someone <laughs> doesn't believe in god they're like well i guess i can just do whatever i want yeah i think there's generally a moral compass that's much stronger than the fear of god but yeah yeah i agree i agree uh so so is there anything about church or religion that you miss i miss uh leaving you it miss- was such a, I miss leaving church because it was a feeling, it was the best feeling in the world. <laughs> like walking out the doors. Walking man. out, <laughs> getting a donut from some dude who's like, everyone is just like rushing to, he squeezes your donut too hard, gives you this squeezed, crusty yeah. donut, but it was They great. would hand that to you out, and, out of the Catholic church? You'd get a little walk up, I, donut? Yep, get a little donut. Yeah. Um, I remember when the bucket, the donation bucket would come around, it'd always be like, oh, we're about to get out of here. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's the sign. That means we're about to end. But I don't miss church at all. I didn't like going because I hated the clothes. I would Uh see girls that I liked at church and I'd be wearing these dorky, dorky clothes (laughs) and I would just be so embarrassed. Um, I was just generally, my whole vibe, my entire life has just been embarrassed generally. I've just been generally embarrassed my entire time Hmm. and I started doing stand up, and I get to not be embarrassed for an hour a night if I'm lucky. Right. Well, do you think part of that non embarrassment is I'm supposed to be embarrassed? Do you know what I mean? Like I'm supposed to be the joke. So I want everyone laughing at me. Well, no, it wasn't embarrassing like that. It was just generally like, I've never known where to stand or how Mm. to stand or what clothes matched or how to look good. Mm-hmm. Um, I was kind of, I went through a chubby phase that I think kind of messed with me for a little bit. Mm. I never felt comfortable, not until I got older that I feel comfortable with my body or anything or my yeah. mind, my capabilities. Yeah. I was just kind of generally embarrassed. Yeah. So interesting that you talk about, uh, you know, your sort of your personal outlook on yourself as a kid, not being very intelligent. Cause my perception of you is that you're very intelligent. Certainly well, your stand-up you. communicates uh, a high level of intelligence. It's not there. Yeah, know. I look back now and I realized that that was dumb. I was definitely, I didn't, you know, read a book and gain IQ points or something. <laughs> I was just, I put all of what I cared about in the, the wrong things. I thought that if I wasn't good at math, it must mean that I'm dumb. I can't play sports, so I'm uncoordinated. Mm. But I wasn't supposed to be doing either of those things. When I got into a, The first time I felt like I might be smarter than someone else was my senior year in English class because I had a teacher that, I don't know, he just like, uh, we would do writing prompts every day. Yeah. And I, it would get to the point where those were kind of my first performances. I would really take some liberties with the writing prompts. Yeah. He'd be like, tell me, make up a reason why you didn't do your homework. And I noticed that I would just, uh, there was another lane I was coming from that other people weren't. Yeah. And that's the point where people were excited for Michael's prompt. You know, so would you like, read it afterward as I well? Read it. Yeah. You would all have to read it out loud. So you got the writing and performance. Always, yeah. Yeah. I started doing that. Uh, and I, I guess I had moments of, I always knew English and words were way more comfortable for me. Sure. Um, I just didn't think that that meant anything. I was like, what am I going to write a book? Like, who cares if I'm good at this? You know, <laughs> this is not helpful. 
Yeah, yeah. And then I, yeah, I just, uh, I didn't, you just got to do what you want to do. It's as simple as that. Yeah, yeah. The thing that you want to do when you're a kid, you can actually do. Maybe not sports and stuff. That kind of, there's got to be a, some, somewhat of a. I mean, it depends on the level at which you're talking about, right? Yeah, um, I, guess, I guess with everything that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. certainly if you, if you love comedy as a kid, join an improv mm-hmm. team, do stand up, yeah. but it might not mean you're going to go pro, right? Mm-hmm. Just yeah. like basketball. But there are city leagues, there are open mics, there are clubs that you can join and, and yeah. do those kinds of things in. Do you, I mean, I guess my thought on religion, because you talk about insecurities, I think everybody has insecurities. One thing I found comforting about my religion was this idea that God does love me no matter what I look like or even what I do. He might be disappointed, certainly, but uh, he still loves me and accepts me. So I guess I'm wondering, did religion help you with that or not at all? Was that not even a factor? Yeah. If, if I did think that God loved me, I thought, well, I want Sarah to love me. And, <laughs> like, I don't feel that. <laughs> right, right. And she's you not going to love me because I can't I guess I just catch. didn't want God to hate me. I never really thought of him loving me. Yeah, interesting. Gotcha, gotcha. And do you I feel... on the bad side. Yeah, I mean, and so in your state now, do you, does that factor in for you, God loving you, or no, not at all? Not at all. I, I just forget about it. I just... Uh, <laughs> you go about your day. I go about my day. I don't think about it really um i'll send out prayers every once yeah. in a while if something uh crazy happens or someone gets sick or something maybe but i, yeah. I guess that's just utilizing every tool that i think i have to make some situation better yeah uh so final question for you michael and then we'll get to the segment that i honestly love the most because it's all about me um is if there's an afterlife, which I believe there is, but for you afterlife, what would you want to do in the afterlife? Zip around space for a while, Uh find all the other souls that I am supposed to be with and connected with, Uh uh, I guess my family and friends and stuff, and then show up to the meeting or whatever it is and and take my next assignment, you know? (laughs) Yeah, I love it. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, we're not too far say, apart. All right, where am I going? What uh, What am I doing? Yeah, let's uh, go. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Is there stand up in the afterlife for you? Do you think? I hope so. Yeah, I mean, but people I know, say I God has a sense of humor, so maybe that's maybe that's the stand up. You know? Oh, I bet. Yeah, but I mean, God, how do you impress that guy? I mean, I think I think I'd be I think like, Conan, I wrote that joke. Every joke you do, it'd be like, I wrote that. Yeah, Conan's a start, right? That's got to be. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Even God starstruck by Conan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I can't God. believe I can't believe I made you, and I'm meeting you again. <laughs> oh man! All right, it's that time, Michael. What's the deal with yeah. Mormons? What is the deal with Mormons? What is the deal? Anything regarding Mormons, Mormonism, or my personal outlook on faith and religion that you're curious about? Yes. A couple questions. Beautiful. Um, that I thought of. One, my best friend growing up, Ryan, was Mormon. He lived behind us in Gilbert. Uh-huh. So until the third grade, this was who I would hang out every day. And I remember the only thing, I didn't know anything about Mormons except that Ryan could not come out and play on Sunday. And I sure. was always upset about that. <laughs> yeah. So is is Sunday like a uh is it kind of just a day of rest type thing? They were very strict about it. They would not break for anything. You could never right. for no exceptions. Right. Yeah, Sunday is the Sabbath. So it's funny. I mean, me yes, my that that is the way my childhood was as well. No hangouts with friends on the Sabbath. As uh, I, re- I remember distinctly, there was a couple times when I was in high school that some friends, and I grew up in Utah, 90% Mormon where I was, and some of my friends would get together to sing hymns on Sunday. That was like our loophole to hang out, right? Okay. Was, we would go to someone's living room and we would, we would play church songs and we would sing church songs together, uh, which is probably, you know, the creepiest thing anyone's ever heard. But um, I remember asking my dad if I could do that. And, uh, and he said, no, we don't, 
no, I, he saw sort of, I think through it and was like, no, you can't, yeah. you can't go hang out and do that. Then years later, when I was in college, basically almost done with university, uh, he and I got into some, uh, some discussion that was tangentially related to going out on Sunday. And he said, I grew up, I don't understand why you kids never went out and sang hymns. I would do that every week growing up in, in small town Summit, Utah. And my sister and I, who were closest in age, were like, are you kidding me? Because we, yeah. we both asked you. Uh, so yeah. it is a thing to not hang out on Sunday, but I think, I don't it's, know. I is it like was, family by family? It's not like a... Yeah. Yeah, family okay. by family. And, and certainly, I think universally throughout the church, there are accepted activities and unacceptable activities to do okay. on Sunday. Um, I think yeah, like wanted, I don't think you could play video games or anything. Or... So again, that was family by family. Because, you know, if you're, doing, if you're doing video games like nonviolent, that was always my house rule. Nonviolent okay. video games on Sunday. Um, but... But yeah, I mean, so there were some families where it was like no homework. You can't do homework on Sunday because that's what you're doing the rest of the week. I'm behind that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that kind of, that's a bummer though. You got something to do on Monday. Right, exactly. So there was, there's, the Mormon faith is, is quite personal in that we believe in a personal connection to God. So a lot of it kind of comes down to this, what do you feel good about doing? Because your thoughts on Sunday in particular should be turned to God. So if you yeah. feel comfortable kind of, you know, in your relationship with God to do your math homework thinking about him, then I guess that's fine. Really? So you could be like, we're tight. Listen, he'll be fine. This yeah. is Grand Theft Auto. And <laughs> I, we're totally taking, tight. I know taking cool everybody to church. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. All right. The other question I had was, how do you feel as a Mormon sort of about how you guys are portrayed um i guess in the way of like the book of mormon and stuff like that because i yeah. feel like you mean the musical in, well just like generally in mainstream i feel like it's yeah. it's almost viewed like close to scientology when i feel like it has a lot more legitimacy and sure. and sort of a it's not at all an evil cult like <laughs> scientology so what yeah. do you i don't know do you kind of does it bother you sometimes is it something you can laugh at um do is there credence to it is there like really weird stuff that you're just totally not you're like yeah that's a weird part of it there's tons of that in the catholic church where it's sure. like uh, kind of, but yeah uh i guess what do you think of your portrayal in the mainstream media yeah i uh usually i find it in i guess cute it's sort of like oh they almost got it right or you know yeah um okay. that it's it's fine. I think the only times I've really been bothered by it are when people, uh, you know, Big Love came out a few years ago now that it, it's when it is not clearly delineated that, that the mainstream Mormon faith does not practice polygamy and hasn't for a while. Okay. Um, that kind of stuff to me is like, well, now you're just being ignorant and you're playing on a certain stereotype for you know viewers yeah, or like you sell it the, yeah yeah so that's oh. the only time it really uh bothers me so but polygamy is totally like oh i'm sorry hang on i'm getting a call <laughs> oh you're all right from someone i told i was doing this <laughs> uh my girlfriend <laughs> i said i'll text you after the podcast um okay she's thought uh, they couldn't still be talking about god could they so polygamy as far as it it's like you would look at a guy doing that like what what are you doing um or or maybe just with a sideways eye if a guy yeah, wait, what do you what fire, do you mean like if someone like if a guy uh i don't know he comes to the church and he's with his uh, nine wives and is are people kind of like well that's a little odd oh or yeah no, no 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 that doesn't happen Okay. Yeah. That's so it's just not, it's not a thing. Yeah. Not even a thing. Right. So, so in the sense that it is a justified stereotype, Mormons practiced polygamy as part of the mainstream faith from let's say like 1840. It was a few years after the church had been established. Joseph Smith, uh, you know, the prophet of the restoration, the guy in New York who found the gold plates, he, um, 
through revelation instituted polygamy in the modern day that lasted from around 1840 to, I mean, quite late, if I remember right. Um, trying to think about exactly the year. I always mess up the year. Early 1900s, let's say. The, the United States ended up passing uh, federal and, you know, polygamy outlawed laws oh, or wow. laws outlawing polygamy. And that's what ended polygamy for the mainstream faith. Um, some, that's a shame. I know real bummer. Some, some members ended up moving to Mexico under a uh, prophetic direction. So the leadership of the church said, you know, as far as we know, we can't, we're not going to do it in the States anymore, but Mexico still allow, still allows it. And we haven't received any further direction from God to stop. So we'll send you to Mexico. You can populate some Mexican colonies down there. And, uh, it lasts there. Roll down to Mexico for the looseness of the law. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's still a tradition today. Um, but no, it now in mainstream Mormonism, if you have, you know, if you're bigamous, you're excommunicated. You're not. Okay. You're not a member of the mainstream faith. All right. Yeah. So monogamy from here on out, um, as, as far as you know, like nineteen what nineteen fifty sixties somewhere around there. Um, so your whole life yeah my whole life for sure that my has parents... to be frustrating then that it is such a like i literally just learned that uh yeah. totally thought it was still a thing that i'm sure i didn't think most people probably did it but i was like i bet there's some uh, it's still a thing yeah 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 Golly, man yeah the, so i can see how that would be very frustrating <laughs> so that's the only time where i'm like ah oh, you just didn't do your research so yeah it's more like you don't so jokes about mormons doing polygamy i don't care those are fun. I will do those. Um, but when people seriously portray, it's like now you're, you haven't even looked into it. You don't care enough to look yeah. into it. You're just using yeah. us in the way that you want to. Um, that's the only time it really gets under my skin. Other than that, I think most every portrayal is hilarious. You know, missionaries are often portrayed and that's just so funny. Any portrayal of any religion is funny because they're all funny. Yeah, and I think you have to laugh you have at to yourself. Have a sense of humor about it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you have to I recognize think... the oddities. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe not all religions are funny. We'll go on record, but <laughs> well, some some religions have I a better mean, sense of humor that I've than been others. Exposed to, I feel like there's there's always funny stuff. Mm -hmm. Especially the Catholic Church. There's a uh, well, there's a lot of not funny stuff, but. Yes. Yeah. You know, for just sure. Goofiness, just goofiness. But there's also a lot of mysticism. I mean, of any faith, I guess, other than um, Pentecostals who, who believe, you know, in like holy rollers and, and speaking in tongues at random times during a meeting, like there's a lot of mysticism in, in Catholicism. As far oh, yeah. as I know, like there are holy relics. There are, you know, the patron saints. Like you're sort of goat people. I mean, there's, you can go, there's darn near anything. Yeah. Yeah. But for any religion that's lasted as long as Catholicism has, there's going to be traditions stemming from, you know, from every yeah. walk of life. So. Some funky stuff. Yeah. I still don't know what that piece of bread is made from that they put in our mouth, a little wafer thing. <laughs> I've never found it on the shelves at a store. I've never had that taste again. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, do you believe in, did you ever believe in transubstantiation? I don't even know what that word means. Uh, so as far as I understand it, there is a Catholic fa a belief that when you take the Eucharist, the wafer, it is becomes the body of Christ. The body of Christ becomes the flesh yeah. of Christ as it travels down, you know, the, the esophagus. I would have never fucking ate that thing if I thought that that happened. <laughs> Be like, dude, I this mean, is skin by the time it's my esophagus? No way. Yeah, yeah. Holy skin, purifying skin. Right. No, I always yeah. just thought it was... Uh, I mean, I knew that's what it was like. I knew it was like the body of Christ, but no, I never actually right. believed that I was drinking blood and eating body. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if there are people that... I mean, there, I there know, have to be, right? There have to be. There absolutely has to be. The, the, it's not even the worst thing you can do in Catholic Church. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if you That's believe like, it's purifying you 
and and you've you know the bible jesus is not mincing words right he's saying you need my my body you need my blood to purify you now i understand it as symbolic as you did uh, i always thought it was kind of like we're doing like a shout out we're like hey thank kudos. you kudos yeah cheers yeah. cheers to you i didn't I really uh yeah i didn't think that i was pu- being purified or anything <laughs> did you do confessional or no did confession yeah. did all the stuff Okay. Everything short of becoming a choir boy. And I did want to be a choir boy. Oh, I think yeah. Because I knew I wanted, even at that age, I knew I wanted to be on stage. You know? <laughs> that was it. Well, and you didn't have to they worry wore. about the outfit or what you wore, right? Yeah. Because it all matched. All it was true. there. It was cool robes. Yeah, man. Absolutely. But uh, thank God, well, now years later, I'm very happy I'm not a choir boy. <laughs> very happy I wasn't alone around the priest. Yeah. At the church. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, anything you got to plug now that, I mean, things are starting to open up, you what know? Would I? <laughs> um, I have no, I mean, I have dates that are hopefully going to be rescheduled that I'll be hearing about pretty soon. Beautiful. So I'll, where can uh, people Michael find you then? Com. Yeah. Michael Michael Longfellow. Longfellow.com is That'll have all my information. Uh, Instagram. I post a lot of stuff on TikTok actually oh dude i've been popping on the tiktok absolutely uh, i have like a hundred thousand followers or something on tiktok like that's right amazing out, out of nowhere yeah. out of nowhere uh, yeah just posting videos that i've already posted elsewhere that's um, great though i mean that's that's the generation you need to get into yeah oh yeah they're real it's a real great place TikTok. yeah lots real of uplifting cool <laughs> <laughs> do you have an only fans page yet or uh... yeah i might as well dude if i have a tiktok <laughs> <laughs> haven't had to do the only fans yet but yeah gave this pandemic a few more months and yeah you can catch a picture of my feet for Beautiful. 3.99 a month i love it um are you worried about getting canceled at all is that something you think about no because i haven't done anything that would warrant <laughs> being canceled so i'm pretty unworried about it uh yeah good yeah i mean I think it's all a great thing. Yeah. There, Cause there are, there is that thing is like, as a white guy, are you, and you see all these white guys, all it's doing is making room for more white guys that aren't creeps. Yeah. yeah I so hope. Great. I hope Goodbye, so. White guy. The whole defend comics thing too is so stupid. I don't, I don't necessarily like comics. I like <laughs> comedy. I like a lot of comics, Yeah. but I don't like a lot of comics too. Yeah. What I love is comedy. So why wouldn't why wouldn't you fight yeah. for it to be the the best place that it can be? Right. Right. Safest I place. I, I would vouch. Yeah. I'd literally vouch for maybe three comedians, dude. And yeah. and you messed I mean, up I every know. time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Always the wrong guy. I have messed up before. I've definitely vouched for people that <laughs> like. Oh, never mind. Why he was a do your dirtiest set. Uh, the, the set that I vouch for you. Why'd you why'd you do new stuff, dude? This is comics are God, they're so funny. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, I'm all about making room at the top. Let's let's, yeah. let's trickle up. That's what I let's say. Do it. Let's be yeah. better to the ladies in comedy. I always knew that was whack. Even ever since I was a kid. Uh yeah. I, I was very thankful that I was not a female doing comedy. Yeah. Yeah, man. Stuff that they I can't imagine. Every comedian has to deal with bull crap, especially from bookers and club owners. I don't know why they're generally just, they have a, and I know some, some absolutely amazing ones. Yeah. But especially like, I'm a guy who says yes to any show, especially in the beginning. I was, dude, I was around straight up, just horrible people. <laughs> yeah. Horrible people. I couldn't believe it. And Jeez. I was a kid too. My, right. My, my first exposure to like all the adults in my world had so far been lovely people and people to look up to. And then I met adults I wasn't related to and just guys that own a, a bar that they run a show at. Yeah. I met my, like, just villains, like literal villains. Yeah. Well, power corrupts, man. Yeah. The, the extreme power. Yeah. Absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. Yeah. Who wouldn't be corrupted? by the power of a bar show <laughs> i know i know i i control your next 15 minutes yeah. unbelievable yeah, uh, i think it's all good stuff that's happening right now 
Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Well, thank you so much for joining us this week, Michael. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And I mean, you're looking great. So that's going for you. Like the hair? I do. It looks nice. It looks nice. Never been longer. It looks like you're kind of trying to replace somebody. A dude. (laughs) (laughs) I thought about that the other day because someone said I look like Ben Shapiro. Oh, and it was a picture of me with short hair. And I was like, no, I have long hair now. And then I was like, so uh. who do I look like now that's bad? <laughs> and then I thought immediately, oh, no. Ah, I <laughs> love right, it. Dude. It's, like it's exactly great. There. It's great. All right, buddy. Thank I you for having it. me. It was great to talk to you, man. Be well Thank you. All. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Have a good week.